Hello, this is Lisa for Brilliance, and today we will talk about different types of sketch and scribble fill digitizing using the Embrilliance Stitch Artist programs. This project first begins by going into create mode, and I will be working in level three. However, I will be using level one functions, and I will tell you when I switch to a different level. You just remember to need to place your mouse cursor on top of any of the tools in your program so that you can see exactly what it does so that you can find the same tool I'm using in my program. First, I need to do is open the image file, which is located on my computer. You will have downloaded it to your computer. Select it, and I will size it for the hoop that I am going to be working on, which happens to be the 5 by 7 Now I can begin digitizing each of the letters, which I will do in a slightly ordered fashion. I will create one letter at a time and walk you through the process. The first one we'll start with is this lower L in the second um, love. I'm going to click on the magic wand tool and move my mouse cursor on top of the L, left click one time so that it draws the shape and hit the enter key on my keyboard. If you look at your object list, you now have a line object and we will assign stitches to that. The color of the object is shown here in the properties pane. So the first thing I will do is click on the color chip and change it to a color that is a little more noticeable. Choose a dark pink. I'm going to apply a fill stitch. So when I click on the fill stitch, um, type stitch here in my um, menu bar, it will assign those stitches to that L with the properties shown here in the lower right pane. The default density is four. Now if I click on the S key on my keyboard to zoom into the selection, we can see that this is a typical fill stitch. I would like to turn this into a sketch stitch. To do that, I can use my density slider here in the properties pane and increase that to a higher number. The higher the number, the further the stitches are apart on the screen. The slider stops at 15. However, you can select 15 and type in any other number to make your stitches even further apart. So I have it set to 18 for this example. The next thing that is a um, property of a sketch fill is that there is no underlay stitching. And that is what we are seeing as the cross perpendicular stitches. That is our underlay. And sketch designs do not have underlay. So I will move my mouse cursor to the underlay property button here in my properties pane, select it, turn off contour and turn off perpendicular, and you will notice that our stitches are adjusted in our pane here um, on in our hoop. I will go back to the fill properties pane because that's where more adjustments need to be made. This is really starting to look like a sketch fill. The first thing I notice is that my start and my stop is located at the top left of my um, object. A true sketch or a, an efficiently digitized sketch will normally start at the top. So I'll move the start to the very top and then I will move the stop bow tie all the way to the bottom. And this tells the software that you need to start stitching way up here and exit stitching way down here at the bottom. So that gets rid of any traveling stitches here in my design because of the angle of my sketch, which is set by the yellow barbell. If the key is to set your start on one side of the angle line and your stop on the other. Now I would like this to have a zero um, angle of inclination. So I am paying attention to the angle that is shown here where it says selected. Watch what happens when I move this angle. You can see that the angle is actually being changed. So I will set it to zero, which is what I want it to be. I have my start at the top, my stop at the bottom. Now a normal fill stitch cannot have every single row of stitching 
end on the object line because at a four point density, that would actually perforate the stitches and make it fall out of your fabric. So the option, this is a great setting for a regular fill stitch, but for a travel, um, a sketch fill stitch, we want it to be set to travel edge. If I choose that option, every single needle point for every single row of stitching has to end on the object line, and that gives it a very clean finish. I, If I click off of this, it looks like a very nice sketch, but I personally would like to have a running stitch that goes around it. The first thing before I do that, I want to check my stitch length. In a fill stitch, your, the stitches will vary in length and you don't want them too close together, otherwise you'll have a very dense hockey puck design. But in a sketch fill, your stitches are further apart density, so I tend to like to set my st fill stitches in here to have a shorter stitch length. And that is because you can see them more and it will they are further apart on our um, stitching. As I mentioned, I would like to have a running stitch to go around this. Each object can only have one properties type. So this current object I have selected has a fill stitch. If I copy and paste it, I now have two objects in my object list and I can select the second one and change it into a running stitch. That will put the typical running stitch that you have the default is normally set to a single. I current I like to have either a double or a bean stitch on my outlines and a bean stitch will give it a little heavier look. The, these two objects are the exact same color and they will stitch out one right after each other so that the machine will not stop. However, if I go to the view menu and turn on my jumps, I can tell that the first object is going to stitch. It's going to start stitching here at the top where the gr green bow tie is and stop stitching at the bottom. My run stitch, again, is going to start stitching at the top, which doesn't make sense because it's going to have to jump to get there. So I'm going to move this down to where the stopping stitch is in the lower right corner so that these two colors will stitch out one right after each other. This letter is basically finished. And the one thing I will do is I will set my locking stitches. And by default, your machine will do a soft lock, but I'd like to make sure that the very first object of two colors has a locking stitch at the entry point and the very last stitch of the second object or third or fourth or whatever the last object is in that color that is connected, I will click on that and I will make sure that it ties at the exit. And that will put a locking stitch at the very top of this one and at the very bottom and it will stitch continuously throughout that area. Let's zoom back out. So I'm gonna go and click on the H for the hoop to zoom out to the H. And I'm basically going to repeat the same steps for this letter E, which is the last one of the top. So quickly going through, I'm going to click on my magic wand, click on the letter E, creates the stitches, hit the enter key on my keyboard to um, finish drawing with the magic wand, click on my color chip, and I will choose a different color for this letter E so that it's going to stop and be different. I will assign it to be a fill stitch. I will copy and paste it. Set the second one to be a running stitch and it remembers the same pass that I had before. The fill stitch is the exact same. So in level one, well, before I even get any further, might as well finish this out. So if I was gonna do the entire, all the letters like this, I will go to my bow tie of the first one, do a tie at the entry, click on the second one, and do a tie at the exit. That is, if I wanted them to be exactly the same, that is perfectly fine. However, let me uh, zoom in, 
hit the S key on my keyboard to look at this letter E, and I want to make sure that my start is at the top of the letter E, my stop is at the bottom of the letter E, it's going at a zero degree angle as well, and for my running stitch, I want to make sure that the start, whoops, not the node, the start is at the bottom where the other one was to avoid my jump stitches, and I might as well move the bean stitch so that it doesn't do any repeating on its own towards the bottom. Now, for this letter E, in level two, we have an option that has the ability to do gradient fills. So if I choose to add a gradient, I can choose to have either be increasing or decreasing, and it's a little bit difficult to see the um, changes until I adjust my density, which is towards, which is the, what it's going to decrease into. And you can see now a little bit, especially when you zoom further away from this, that there is a slight gradient. If you want your gradient to be more exaggerated, increase the top number. So that's, let's say put 24, and you'll see that it's a little further apart at the top and it gets closer together towards the bottom. So that is one way of doing a gradient sketch fill, which will give you a little bit of dimension. Have a fun, play with that, and that is a Stitch Artist level two function. One more way that you can work with um, changing a simple sketch fill, and we're gonna work on the letter V here. This is, I could use my magic wand and create one single object, but I thought it might be nice to have the V do a sketch in one direction and then a sketch in the other direction. So it's opposed to using the magic wand, I will need to draw with points. To do that, I use the draw with points tool and I will be using square points so that it becomes a nice square shape. So I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard and I will left click to create one half of the V. So I'm just clicking and drawing the shapes as I want them. I know that I want this to connect so I don't have to close it using my mouse. I can hit the close button and that will automatically draw my finish drawing my shape and close it automatically for me. So let me um, select it one more time so that I have it selected and you can see that it is one half of my V. Now I want to put a copy on one side and do a paste on the other, but let me set my fill stitches for this half so I don't have to do it twice. I can just copy and paste the same shape. While it's selected, I'm gonna click on my fill stitch just like I did before and I'm not going to outline it because I'm going to outline the whole thing towards the end. I can move my angle and if I have level one this is I could create a shape that would fill I'll move my start over to this side and I'll move my stop over to this side and I could have an angle so that it does the V with two angles copy and paste as I'm going to do it as um before, but I wanted to show one more function of level two, which is adding a curved fill. So that's in your properties pane. While we have this selected, I'll click on the curved, and you'll notice that the angle of inclination is now a radius, and that radius or that curved line can be moved so that you can create any type of curve shape that you want. You can even double click on that line and add another node so that your curve can become wavy and add another node by simply double clicking on the line and create a zebra or a, a curved shape to this side. And I thought that would be a little bit fun. Once I have this side created, I want to do the exact same shape on the other side. So I'm gonna select it. I will go into select mode, copy, paste, and do a flip so that I don't have to, it will flip this object, move it into place, and I have my curved V done this way. One thing I need to do is I didn't change the color of this. So let me select both of these at the same time, click on my color chip, and choose a different color from my 
thread list. Let me go back into create mode because I need to check on my starts and stops so that there's nothing extra going on here. I can actually see that there's a dashed line because this one starts at the top, stops at the bottom, and I need for this one to start, whoopsie, need to make sure you're grabbing on the correct item. Grab this start at the bottom and move this one up here and I'll move it up here to the top. Now, there we have our swirly outline shape, and I want to create, it's a fill, swirly fill shape, and I need to create my outline. I will do that with draw with points. So I'm, I select, by habit, I will select this one in case I had anything afterwards that will put my outline at the end of it. Choose draw with points, hold my control key down, and I'm gonna, since my, software or since my object stops at the upper right corner, that's where I'm gonna start clicking. So I will left click as I create my outline around this shape. Get up here to the top, click on closed shape and click on my outline and it should remember my bean stitch which will happen to work perfectly fine. I may need to adjust the node so that it encompasses. It is always easier to adjust after you have things drawn by just clicking and moving things into place. This time I have three objects. So I'm gonna left click on the first one to select it, go to my bow tie, say tie it entry, select my last running stitch, click on the bow tie and it automatically says tie it exit. And if you notice the second one in the tie offs does not have any. And that will allow my shape to completely stitch continuously. We've done three letters in our love, and now we'll move on to the next section. The next two letters will be the V and the O, and we're gonna do those in the scribble style. These can be done in level one as well, so, but they require using draw with points. So I'm gonna click on draw with points, and we're gonna do the bottom V first. This is, needs to, you need to have a plan on how you want it to look, and I want this to have a very organic look. So I want it to look as if I took my pen and went up and down and up and down and up and down on one side, and then did the same thing on the other side. I do want these to be straight lines, not curves, so I'm going to be using the control key as I left click. I'm going to make it one continuous line. And you need to try and keep this as organic as possible by moving as quickly as possible because you don't want it to look like a mechanical drawing. You want it to look rather freeform. And if that means random clicking, that so be it. Once you get the first side done, I will go and click on the next side to basically go up and down and do the same thing that I did on the left side, making sure that I only click one time on each side so that it becomes a scribbly mess. And the messier it is, the more organic it looks. And this is where you could decide where you want to stop. And I will stop up here at the top. I'll hit the enter key on my keyboard. And if I want to, I can try moving these around, but I'll tell you that in my experience, the more you move, the more mechanical it looks. And you really want this to have a scribbly type look. So don't I don't recommend moving it around. Once you have your scribbles set, I will click on my running stitch, which again uses the same stitch type, and you're free to change these to be whatever um, other settings that you'd rather have. And make sure that this time we want the tie to be both at the entry and the exit. Now, one thing that I, whoops, I forgot to change the color of this. So it's the same color that we were just working on. So let me go down here. We'll change it to a purpley color just to give it something different. Now, as I'm looking at this, one thing that I know in my experience of stitching is that I don't like when my locking stitch is at the very end of a line of stitching. It seems to have a, the knot will go there and it just sometimes you can fray more. So I will take the bow tie and I will move it in just a stitch or two from the very end point. I will do the same thing on the 
um, ending point line as well so that I know that my stitches won't unravel at that very last point. The stitchings will go up to the point, backtrack a little bit, and then put the locking stitch. And that is how easy it is to do this type of scribble. Just do a free form and make it look as overlapped and as crazy as you'd like. Make sure that you're saving your work every so often because I've already done four letters and if something happened, I would lose all this work. So as I'm digitizing, I will go to save as and type in double love, click save, and it will save both my working file and my stitch file at the same time. The next one we'll work on is the letter O and as opposed to drawing circles around like in the sketch, I'm going to use the flyout here at the top to draw one circle and copy paste and create a random loop or lariat of stitches. So I'm going to select this drawing, my library shape, left click and hold and drag my mouse to create an O. Now this creates a circular shape and if you notice this shape is customizable and that I can grab a corner and resize it, but I can't, uh, and I or a side and resize it, but it remains to be a completely circular shape. I do not have nodes. In order to get nodes to adjust, I need to, while this object is selected, right click on it and choose convert to curve. That places nodes at the four corners, or four adjustment points, which lets me change angles, change the shape of this circle, but it's still a closed shape. And it is closed at this red dot. On a closed shape, that is what the red dot signi signifies. That is the open close point. If I want to add a different open close point, for example, in the upper left corner here, I can double click on the line to add a node select that node so it turns blue and click on the open close button here at the top. This allows me to open my shape. So it is no long, longer a closed shape. It has the red closed or ending point and it has a green open point. So this is where if I were to close the shape again, it's going to con connect between this green dot and this red dot. Now it's just a singular looped circle or looped shape, I should say. If I would like to add another one that would basically connect from this point and go around again, I can select this object, copy and paste it. So now in my object list, you'll see I have two of them. Move that green dot to where towards where that red dot was. So see where my green dot is and the red dot was here? See, that? that's the last stitch of this one. So or the last drawing point, I should say, and the first drawing point of this one is right next to it. If I now select both of these and go to the Create menu, Outline, and choose to Connect Outlines, it puts a little connecting point right in between these two. It, it closed it. So I can actually select, double click and delete one of those. But now I have one swirly object. If I want to do that one more time, and this, if I say I have this one selected, and if I want to do a copy paste, move the pasted one so that the green dot is kind of near this, maybe rotate this a little bit so I can get a really a more organic look. And yes, pay attention. I'm looking to what it's doing. It's going to connect this line over to here. So maybe I want to move that one just a little bit closer because that's where the connection is going to be. And now select both of these two at the same time. Go to create outline connect outlines, and it closes the shape, adding it, uh, that little connecting place right between there. And I can double click on one of those nodes to remove it. I can kind of maybe move one of this one down and curve it so it's embedded in here. Maybe move one of this up and embed this one in the top here so it doesn't look like it ends. And reshape my previously round shape into a more organic shape. And you can do this as many times as you need to to create a 
wild looking looped shape as you want. I'm not closing it. I'm leaving it open as an open run. I will click on my bean stitch and it will do, or the running stitch tool, it keeps the same properties as it did before and go to my tie off to make sure it says both tie entry and exit. So this is one more way of creating a organic scribble type letter O. One thing that I'll want to do is also change its color so that my machine will stop. The next two letters we will do using the satin column contour fill, which is a level two function. So we'll start with the letter L here of the very top. So I will use my magic wand to click on this section, left click, and it will create my contour shape or co create my object, hit the enter key on my keyboard. And again, I will go in through here and change it to a different color. Now this letter, if I choose the satin contour that will just, or satin fill, satin column, I should say, that will simply fill this with stitches. And this would be a level one function as this is here. However, I want to change this into a contour, which is a level two function. So the first thing I need to do is add angles and that is adding angles of inclination. And this, I will left click and drag my mouse to direct how I want the stitches to be placed in this shape. So a satin column in level two allows you to add multiple angles of inclination. Hit the enter key when you are done adding them. We will go over to our satin properties and where it says normal, we will choose either, we will choose the satin contour length and where, it, or satin contour style, I should say, and change our stitch length to a shorter number such as 2.5, which is another running stitch type thing. Now you'll notice, let's hit the S key on our keyboard so we can zoom in and we will see that the way that this stitches is it will start on one end of the column shape and stitch to the other end and run back and forth, filling this with runs of stitches. It's not, the density is a slider and the further apart, the more space you will have within these stitches. So choose a density that is appealing to you. That's, that's going to work with the number of, of runs that are going back and forth. And we notice that it is gonna start stitching because this jump is going from this letter, letter O, because letter that's where we're at, and it is jumping to the top. So this is where it's going to start stitching. It's probably gonna stop stitching on the bottom right, but because this is an engineered fill, we don't have controls over start and stops. We are, however, going to add an outline around this, because I want these, these ends to have a more finishing edge to them. So in the same manner as we did before, while it's selected, I will hit copy and paste, so select the second one in our object list here, change it to a running stitch tool and our running stitch uh, properties. And it again is a bean stitch. And I can see that there is now a jump stitch between the last object jumping up to the start of the next object. So I will grab my bow tie here, the green one, and drag it over to this point so that this is where it will start stitching and get rid of that jump stitch. Because a bean stitch is normally continuous, I will take the other one and move it over to this side as well so that it doesn't overlap each other and it will start and stop at the same point. On this Ob these two objects, as I've done before, I'll select the first one and do a tie at the entry, select the second object, and make sure that it only has a tie off at the exit so that there's no double knots here in this end. And again, save my work. Now for the next one, I'm going to use my compass rose and zoom into the letter O so that I can see it completely on my screen and maybe make it a little bit smaller so that I can see all these stitches. I'm basically gonna do the same thing as I did before, as far as um, I wanna create a satin contour, but this time 
I am going to use the left right input so that I can actually create the column stitch. So I'm going to move my cursor up here to the top, the left right input. And the way that this tool works is that you set the boundaries of either side and the angle at one time. I know that sounds confusing, but what if you watch how I do it, I'm going to left click on one side, move my mouse cursor, and you notice that that is an angle, and I'm going to go to the inside of the O and left click. I'm going to move my mouse cursor to the outside of the O and left click, inside of the O and left click. And I'm going to do that around this entire letter. What that does is it is setting the angles so that those stitches will curve around. Think of the satin stitch lettering that you stitch using the lettering tool. All of those satins are actually going and changing the angle. And this is how those letters are actually digitized. So I am left clicking, left clicking. I'm even though I'm going on the right side and on the inside, I'm always left clicking until I get to the very end. And I do need to close these or overlap them just a bit so that they are uh, touching each other and hit the enter key on my keyboard. And it remembers the last setting that we used for the last letter. So if I was happy with that spacing, I can just leave it as it is and go from there. One thing that you'll notice is that because this was is a one column, one object, and it overlaps here, either you have will have a seam. So this will be one time to use your creative options, and I have provided for you in that sketchy um, in the file that you downloaded from the blog. There's a little daisy, and you can import that daisy. And let's see if we can move him into place right over here. But think of any other design that you may want to place over that join. It is just something to keep in mind that this style, when you have some places that connect, it will have a connection point. The final letter E I created using Stitch Artist Level 3 functions. To start off, I used my magic wand and I clicked to create the first E and hit the Enter key. Let's click on the setting on the color chip and we'll go back and choose one final different color for this design. I set it to be a running stitch, but before I did this, I want to make sure that I want to create all the other interior decreasing lines. Because this is something small, I'm going to click on the S so I can zoom in on just the letter E. And I'm basically going to be using contour like as in quilting, but this is such a small shape that I want. I didn't want to have any of the uh, lines working um, working against each other. So let's see. Before I do anything else, let me clean this up. I'm, in fact, I want all these nodes. I don't want it to be rounded. I want it to all be square. So I'm going to select all these nodes by using the lasso. And this can be done in any of the levels in case you have something you want to change all the nodes to one type of node. Select all of them using the lasso, right click, and change it to what it is that you want. So I want them all to be lines. And now I can. it's so much easier for me to um, get rid of extra lines by double clicking on the extra nodes. And that will help me keep a nice square shape, which is uses requires less editing. So that's all I'm doing. Double clicking on each one of the extra nodes to clean them up. And if I need to adjust any of them now that I have fewer nodes, it is certainly much less, much easier, much more to um, make adjustments. So um, fiddle with that as much as you want. Now I have my original shape that's here that I want to make into my letter E. I am going to, while it's selected, use the inflate objects tool here, select this. And I actually, 
need to, this is how, this is a tool I'm going to use, but I want to make sure I am doing it on copies. So let me hit the cancel button here. I have this one selected. This is my first one. I am going to copy and paste it so that I have two on top of each other. While the second one is selected, I am going to click on the deflate or inflate op options, and I'm going to go into a negative value. So I'm going to choose a negative one millimeter. And you'll see that it uh, creates a interior shape. If I uncheck the soft and corners, you'll see that it remembers and it doesn't add extra wavy lines. So it now creates that interior shape. So I'd used one millimeter. Click OK. Now I'm going to copy, paste, click on the deflate button. I can actually uncheck soft and corners, use my slider, go down to one millimeter, click OK, and you see how it is decreasing it itself as it goes in. So this is a nice process to remember how it is or, or to remember how it exactly you want to uh, create your shape. Click OK. Now this last one, I didn't want it to have a double line. I wanted it to have basically just a a single line of its own. So I didn't want to create one more. Let me show you what I mean. Copy, paste, deflate it. If I click on the do minus one millimeter, click OK. Do you see how it does that shape here in the center? Oh, actually, I like the way this looked on the last one. Oh, and because I turned it into curves, it actually fills it in nice. That actually did not bad of a job. So I'm going to leave it that way. I'm not going to make any adjustments. If I didn't want to have a, this one actually looks really nice with the single line here in the middle, and I'm okay with this. But if I didn't want this this line in here and I wanted it to match, this is when I can go and delete these extra points so that it is just, that's actually nice too. This is, this is why we are able to create. Let me ex get rid of the extra copy here. Looking at it on screen, you're the artist, you make the artistic decisions that you want. So now I'm gonna select all four of these, change them into my bean stitch, and one of the options that I will use to optimize these starts and stops is to go to create and choose auto entry exit so that there are no jump stitches in this and it will actually put them in there to create its own style of um, running stitch. If I don't like where it is connecting and I'm, it's going to bother me and I want it to connect in different locations, I can select on any object and move my starts and stops as I see fit. But I'm actually pretty happy with the way that that automatically did it. I'm going to select the first one, go to my tie, make sure it says entry, turn off the one at the exit. Same thing here. I want to go through each one because I don't want to add extra knots until we get to this bottom one here and say tie at the exit so that it is at that point. And that is how I created the sketchy, scribbly, different variations of the sketch fills in this love design. Hopefully you enjoyed that.